Welcome back to the Naval News section. Today's news comes to us from USNI News. It's United States Naval Institute. This story written by Mrs. Mallory Shelbourne. Uh, she says, Navy wants to buy two additional Arleigh Burks a year while developing the next generation destroyer. And here we have a beautiful photo of uh, one of the new Arleigh Burks in a floating dry dock here, uh, seeing some maintenance. Good to see uh, these ships getting the, the care that they need so they can continue to operate in the environments we uh, ask them to work in. From the piece, she writes, the Navy is committed to buying two Arleigh Burke Flight 3 destroyers per year in tandem with development of the new Next Generation DDG. Uh, the top surface warfare requirements officers said on Wednesday, while the first priority of the Navy's Surface Warfare Division Director on the Chief of Naval Operations Staff is delivering the Arleigh Burke Class Flight 3 destroyers on time, uh, the second priority is seeking two per year cadence for large surface combatants. Quote, my next priority is related to the first, and that is to budget for and build two large surface combatants a year at a minimum. Two ships with a year of 35 to 40 year service life results in an objective force of 70, 80 large surface combatants in our Navy, says Rear Admiral Paul Schlees uh, during a speech at a symposium hosted by the American Society of Naval Engineers. And this really checks with what they tried to do in 2022. They wanted to build, you know, two Virginia class and then two of the uh, Arleigh Burks as well. Uh, it was initially funded for one Arleigh Burke, and then they tried to get additional funding for a second Arleigh Burke. That second Arleigh Burke funding, as far as I know, is still pending, uh, but they're already looking ahead to 2023 here, trying to get two uh, Burks a year along with up to maybe three Virginias. That's unlikely. Uh, we'll see what they report with the Virginia class in the future, but it would be nice to get, you know, three Virginia classes and two Arleigh Burks a year. That would really put us on pace with uh, being able to push back against uh, powers over in the Asian theater. Quote, as uh, N96, that's referring to uh, a staff position and like a higher officer, uh, I will continue to make the case of our surface shipbuilding priorities uh, to include two large surface combatants he said, and we need to uh, trans transition from Flight 3 to Next Generation DDG. And what he's talking about here is this is the new uh, DDGX is what it's known as right now. Uh, they want to they've already started designing this. The money for design has begun. So this is in progress right now. And initially, this looks very promising. This is the future. This is where we're going. Let's go back to what the Admiral has to say, though. He says, quote, Jack Lucas and the Flight 3 is that follow are going to be incredibly capable ships. He's talking about the early Burks now. And they're packed with considerable combat punch and they have uh, and they're a bridge to the future, but the Arleigh Burks are not the future. While they represent a superb effort by the shipyards and the acquisition community, design, engineering, and so forth, uh, the DDG-51 hull form, there simply isn't any more margin for growth. Yeah, the ship isn't physically big enough to add a lot of these newer systems on it. So what they're going to do is they're going to build a new destroyer that's going to be physically larger. It's going to have a lot of the same systems initially as the Flight 3 or the Arleigh Burks in general have right now, including that new Spy 6 uh, radar, which is pretty incredible in capability. And uh, as the new technology becomes available, they'll be putting that technology on the DDGX. Uh, down here at the end of the piece, he talks about the new DDGX. He says, quote, with DDGX, we're designing in margins, space, weight, power, cooling, SWAP, and accom to accommodate future capabilities, capabilities that are under development today and who is to be proven through intense land-based testing uh, and, on, and on other platforms already in service. Uh, we, well, we want to uh, have full maturation uh, for everyone for these future capabilities. We may not be... Uh, you may not be bending metal on the DDG X for decades, but we may be making time while our adversaries move forward. So that's an interesting statement there that uh, I'm shocked to read. We may not be bending metal on the DDG X for decades. So that gives you an idea of how far out in the future this may be. I heard some estimates that this, these ships could come in, um, to service in the 2030s and hopefully that's what he's referring to but whenever i see the term decades that tells me more than 20 years before we see these ships and that's simply that's an awful long time away isn't it to be beginning paying for them now and de in design and maybe we're seeing the first ones uh way way uh in the future anyway back to the piece 
Uh, DDDGX is a culmination of lessons learned from past programs. This is where he begins to get my attention because he's talking about the LCS and the Zumwalt without saying the LCS and the Zumwalt. Uh, back to the Admiral, he says, rather than tying the success of the DDGX to development technology, uh, we're using known mature technologies on a flexible platform that can be upgraded for decades to come. As the technology of tomorrow becomes more proven and mature, this is an eventual or an evolutionary ship, not a revolutionary ship. And that I, you know, the term revolutionary ship was lauded in the early 2000s whenever they talk about the Zumwalt. And that turned out to be a bit of a bust, didn't meet expectations. Here, they're kind of tempering expectations with a good development process that tests these new systems that will be available in the future ashore and on other platforms before they uh, tie it to the success of, of the next generation DDG. They're saying all the right things. They're saying we learned the lesson. We're not going to repeat the mistakes of the past. And that's going to save us you know, time and money and, you know, people won't be as disappointed in the LCS program as those who know about that program in detail are disappointed. Uh, back to the piece, he says, quote, so what I, pro uh, what I propose to the department should commit to funding two large combatants a year for, let's say, 10 years, during which times we'll transition from flight three to DDGX. So he's going down from decades, plural, down to a 10 year plan. Um, so, you know, 20, 2033, maybe where we get the DDG X, uh, online. And that's kind of reasonable. These, these programs take a long time to get going. Uh, you know, you start designing very early on and you kind of forget about it for a few years as the engineers and architects do their work and you build the tools to make the ships parts and stuff. And then you have a, a three to five year build process for hall one to kind of work out the problems of, of production and then you get the ball rolling, building them to a year like we're doing with the Arleigh Burks now. That's kind of the process. The first one always takes the longest. The first one will always have the most problems, um, probably costs the most because it takes longer. And he's recognizing all these things up front. So it really does appear as if the Admiral is acknowledging the problems of the past, of the early 2000s and the ambitions we had back then. And, um, you know, taking that, taking that into account, the process into account in trying to sell this new DDGX. He says, um, uh, both Congress and the industry move forward with two flight threes per year and two DDGXs per year over a three to five year transition. So there's going to be some overlap where they're building two Arleigh Burks and two DDGs at the same time. That's going to be interesting to see how we're going to do that. Because uh, right now we're having trouble funding just two Arleigh Burks a year. I don't see us being able to fund four large surface combatants in a year. But we'll see whenever that time comes. You know, it's uh, it's going to cost a lot of money. And that's really what it's going to come down to is people love to uh, propose these plans and Congress loves to uh, authorize them. But whenever it comes to the appropriations voting to pay for these programs, then that's when everybody backs off and says, well, I can't, I can't be on board with increasing the deficit X million or trillion dollars to pay for these programs that they voted for and then don't want to vote to pay for. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. It's an ambitious plan. I'm on board with it. We need to get DDGX done. It's a shame it's going to take 10 years, but I do like the idea of building more Arleigh Burks because this is the best ship in our fleet right now as far as surface ship, large combatants go. Uh, the Arleigh Burke is awesome. Multi-role ship, you know, theater ballistic missile defense ship. It can operate independently with groups. It can operate with uh, carrier strike groups, expeditionary strike groups. Um, it can even do, you know, close in shore operations too. So it, it's really a multi-role ship that's extremely capable and, uh, you know, building more of the flight threes just makes sense. All right. I'll put these links in the description for you so you can read the entire article yourself. Big credit to Mallory over at USNI.news or USNI.org, USNI News. Thank you for writing this piece and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.